Hello, <laughs> everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I especially hope some people join me this week because this week I'm all by myself. Well, I'm not really all by myself, but I'll get to that in a second. Before I forget, I'm Greg Swartz. I'm the big man. This will be momentarily my wee dram, but it's not yet. Uh, but this is going to be a different kind of thing we're doing this week, but it's going to be kind of special for me because, well, if you already saw the post to come here, you probably know why this is special to me. Um, I'm, I'm going to be back to having guests next week. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff, but this week I had something really kind of cool happen and it just struck me as a good idea at the time to, to go for it. And so I'm doing that. And what that is, is this right here. This is a cask sample from my friends at the Glasgow Distillery. Now, again, most of you probably know this, but the reason this, this cask sample is more special and all cask samples are awesome and fun, but this one is a little bit different because this one is a whiskey that I helped to make. Um, uh, in, in 2018, before we shot the film, uh, I was invited by Liam Hughes, uh, the managing director and co-founder of the Glasgow Distillery, who is a friend of Rachel McNeil's, and that's how I met him, uh, because Rachel McNeil from the Isle of Whiskey Academy had, uh, was, she was hugely helpful to us behind the scenes, uh, getting the film made, making connections, even as, even recommending places to stay and eat when we were on Isla. Um, uh, Rachel was an angel to us, and she hooked me up to Liam. And Liam wrote back to me very kindly and said, well, why don't you come work here for a week? Learn a little bit about how the distillery works on a on a day to day basis, and so I said, "Sure, let's do it." And uh, I did. And literally a week before we started shooting the film, I flew to Scotland a little more than a week early than the rest of our crew. And the folks at Glasgow Distillery uh, at the time, the head distiller was Lachlan McIntyre, who's become a good friend of mine and has since moved back to his native Australia. Um, but he had me work with different distillers there, Aaron and Alex, and then they have an in-house Cooper there, which is the only small distillery I know that has an in-house Cooper, uh, who also became a good friend of mine. Well, they, they all did, they're, they were all wonderful. Um, that was Shug, um, who's been on here before, Shug McMurray. And what, they, what I did is on the first day, Aaron and I, he taught me how to mash in. And on the second day, um, we started, you know, moving different, the mash into the washbacks and, uh, you know, um, we started just moving everything around, which was incredibly nerve wracking, <laughs> to be honest with you, because, um, you know, it's just a lot of valves is what it is. It's turn this valve, but never touch this valve till you touch this valve and this valve over here. And they told me it takes about a month before you kind of get the sort of muscle memory of it down. And, you know, when you're talking, we're not talking about, you know, a couple of liters of water, we're talking about 4,000 liters of mash that's, you know, very expensive and very time consuming and, and very space consuming. So the first day um, I, I mashed in, then I started, you know, filling wash bags. Then I, we did the uh, wash still, then we did the spirit still. We, I learned a lot about even like the, a truck came to take away the draft and I helped with that. And then on the second to last day, I got to go work in Shug's Wee Cooperage and try to cooper a barrel, which was a disaster. And then on the final day, I actually got to fill 12 casks that I helped from that beginning of that week, sort of shepherd through the process. And it was kind of a novel idea at the time, but uh, I bought one of those 12 casks. Uh, they were, I, I believe the Glasgow distillery is no longer selling casks. And most of these, it's funny, these new distilleries, they, they were all selling casks uh, at the beginning because it's a great way to, in essence, you're selling hundreds of bottles of whiskey at a, at a go. But now they've become so popular that, that it doesn't make sense for them to do it anymore. They, they, they can sell all the whiskey they can make and, you know, more power, more power to them and not just Glasgow, but, but also um, Arden Merkin uh tour vague which i have sitting here as well and then some i don't have here yet like rosse and um, some others so um i this was october of 2018 so a couple of weeks ago this became whiskey so i can honestly say i'm incredibly proud of this and incredibly excited about this is that i made whiskey i didn't do it alone very few people do do it alone, you know, uh, but I, you know, and I'm not even going to claim that I was the main driving force, but I, you know, I, this is literally the result of the mash that I helped make the first day. 
So I have not opened this yet. I, I took the, the little seal off the top because I didn't want to do that while I was live because I figured it would be a disaster. And it turned out it would have been. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it took a bit to get off, uh, but I got it off. So this is my first cast sample of my cask. Um, this is, I'm going to read this to you. This is cask 724. Um, I don't know what some of this stuff means, just barcodes and stuff like that. Sample request 11.5.2021. ABV 61.8% ABV. I do know because I filled the cask that this is an ex bourbon cask. Um, this is also the Glasgow 1770 peated expression. Um, I have right here um, one of the very first bottles they ever sold. Uh, they actually, this whiskey went on sale while I was working there. And so I got a bottle of that as well. You can see it's release number one. It is sealed and will stay as such for I don't know how long. Uh, I'm not only a huge fan of the people, they were wonderful to me. I'm actually a huge fan of the whiskey. I think it's great. I think it's unique. I think it's doing really, really well. And I cleared this with them before I started today. I can tell you that in 2022, having ridden out the worst of the global pandemic and supply chain issues and all of that, they are going to be starting to import to the U.S. And I know it's six states to begin with, and I know that the first state is the one I'm call, talking to you from, California, which makes sense. Um, not because of me, but because of the population. <laughs> because it has, you know, very, very good liquor laws, uh, very huge population, big whiskey community. It's, good, it's a good place to start. So um, they don't have a date yet, you know, the world being what it is right now, but they know it's Q1 of 2022. And they're going to release all three of the 1770 variants, the core range, which is 1770, 1770 peated and triple distilled. And they and this, this didn't exist when I worked there. Um, now they have what is called Malt Riot, which is their blended malt, which uh, I'm told is has been also uh, selling like hotcakes in the UK. And it's going to be imported here, too. Um, so I went through my Glen Cairn glasses today and then I realized I was like, oh, wait, I have. I'm going to, I'm going with the Copeta today because I have a Glasgow 1770 Copeta. So I am now going to open this. This is my whiskey for the first time. Um, and I'm going to share a dram with you. Unfortunately, it's going to be a virtual dram. Mm. Wow. The, the peak hit me stronger than I thought it was going to. Um, I knew it was because it's, it's young and it's 61% ABV. I, I knew that there's going to be a big spirit on the nose, but the, the, um, there's a lot of smoke right there. Um, well, so here goes. Let's launch a bomb. Hmm. It's it's funny. You can see. Uh, first of all, this is you know, like I said, it's sixty. What did I say? Sixty-one point eight. It's three years and a month old. Uh, ex bourbon cast. You can actually see how light the color is. Um. It's very biscuity on the nose. Not quite as spirity as I thought it was going to be. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, to like a, a toffee note, almost like a, it's funny because I, I would normally only ever say this about a um, sherry cast whiskey, but there's a, there's kind of a raisin kind of note on it, which this has not seen a sherry cask at all. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of water. This is, it's young and strong, but it's delicious, actually. Uh, I mean, I'm, it is not, I have actually no plan in place whatsoever as to when I'm going to bottle this. So if anyone has anything uh, they want to say in the uh, chat, I've seen people coming, some comments coming up in the chat. Hello, to some of our friends. Hello, Keith. Uh, I'm really glad to see you. Uh, oh, cool. Keith, Keith Duncan, our friend in Scotland, he has a, a glass of the, GDC to celebrate. Uh, I don't know who this person is. Cheers, Greg. Cheers to you, whomever you are. <laughs> um, Mark Pruitt. Um, there is rejoicing. <laughs> and um, Ness. Thank you, Ness. Um, I'm really excited about this. I don't know when, like I said, I don't know when I'm going to bottle this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to have some real fun with that. I, I know I threatened a few weeks ago to put a blank bottle up in the, in the Facebook group and let people come up with some ideas. But if anyone has any ideas, I would love to hear them. 
um, literally, uh, because I just don't know when I'll be bottling this. I'm, I, I think I'll probably wait another year or two. And, I, and and actually, that was my opinion before I tasted this. This actually, I would be completely content maturity wise to bottle this now, but it's only going to get better. Mm. Wow. It's almost the, the, the peating on it is kind of reminiscent of like a Highland Park. You know, it's definitely it's a Highland peat. It's not an iodine kind of uh, Isla peat at all. Um, and it's honeysuckle. Um, orange peel. Definitely a, a hint of orange peel. But that's it's funny to me that I'm getting these kind of notes that are um, often kind of assumed to be attached to sherry cask whiskeys. There's still there's still a little more spirit on the nose than I would want to bottle. Um, I'll let the cast do its work. Um, I uh, I see uh, Chris Brown is a friend of ours, friend of the film, friend of mine, Pennsylvanian, Mike and myself. Um, I, Chris, uh, I, I'm assuming if the states roll out in order, um, Pennsylvania will probably be 49th or 50th to get it. Uh, that being said, I will absolutely bring some. Um, certainly when I, when I bottle it, um, uh, I know that, uh, if Fiona Beasley says uh, to you know, bring some down to Australia and share, um, when I bottle it, I will, I don't know when I'll be back in Australia next. I'd love to come back. Uh, one of our producers and I were talking about Australia last night. We're doing an event, a live event, uh, in Australia with, uh, a guy named Luke Lawler and I wasn't prepared to mention that right now so therefore i'm not prepared to even remember what town it's in because it got delayed multiple times because of the pandemic but i know it's back on it's going to be in november it'll be in our group for sure um this is a 200 mil bottle uh i probably just took 10 mils out of that maybe 20. um this probably won't be making it back east um i'm gonna be sharing this with some of our team members but the eventual bottlings will for sure um and it's funny, this is, it's, I put some drops of water in here and uh, I really kind of knocked the nose down big time, knocked the peat off the nose. Mm. It's, there's a really great amount of that bourbon cask influence, not too much. Um, sometimes I think it can get a bit too um, sugary too sweet for me too too much vanilla and i love vanilla but I, I want the right amount of it and this is this is great um i actually it's funny this is really like, i'm not gonna I, i'm not gonna pretend to have any clue what he would say but this is very much a whiskey that i think that uh jim McEwen would like because um i know he's a big fan of ex-bourbon cask peated whiskeys that are you know tried and true straight that's why the first bottling we did um related to the film was a uh a Brooklady that was well that was unpeated but it was an ex bourbon cask straight away didn't need a cask finish and it I think that Jim has the sort of discipline to not cask finish something if he doesn't if he thinks it'll shine on its own so um but it's this is I, this is completely new to me I mean this is this is really exciting I have to admit not today I, I I knew because Seb at the Glasgow distillery wrote to me and said um, he hadn't tasted it but when he called the uh, when he pulled the, the cask sample, he he wrote to me and said it smells amazing. And up until that point, I was nervous. I was like, you know, what if they open it up and it's just like black goo, or <laughs> if I completely screwed something up and it's just like rubbing alcohol or something. But uh, I mean, I, there's enough people there doing quality control. I kind of knew that wasn't going to be the case. But you know, hey, I was filling casks. You know, oh, that reminds me. Um, here, I want to. One and two here. I'm going to show this. Um, this is me filling my cask. There you go. Uh, I filled 12 casks. I can't tell from this photo which cask this is, but this is one of the 12 casks. Um, which, if you've never done, is kind of a lot like pumping gas in your car. Um, but I I filled 12 casks. Had no issues. Had no uh, none. At no point did the nozzle pop out and soak me or anyone else around me. So. Um, 
uh, this was not only was it a huge learning experience, it was a really great cultural experience. Just, you know, I got to hang out with the, <clears throat> the crew at the Glasgow distillery and do sensory analysis on Fridays and eat steak bakes from Greg's the baker. I, uh, it's funny. I, I asked um, Sebastian if he wanted to join me today, but he couldn't. He was he would have liked to have, but he was unable to because he had a dinner with his parents. Um, and um, well, Fiona Beasley says she's going to be working on a whiskey show today. I'd like to know when I'll, when I'll be back. So I, yeah, I don't know when I'll be back, but November twenty six is that is that um, event, and I will Fiona. I will find out the specifics before as soon as I'm done here. I'll, I'll find it out and send it to you. Um, does anyone <laughs> have any questions? <laughs> I, uh, um, yeah, so the, in, in, I, I see Facebook user says, I'm looking forward to it. it you know, I, I, I say this all the time, but I'll say it again. The, if someone's commenting from the Facebook group, it just shows up as Facebook user, unless they go out of their way to grant permission for the name. So, um, they will be, this, this whiskey is going to be coming to the U S um, in quarter one of next year. I know they were planning it before the pandemic happened and i think that just kind of derailed everything for obvious reasons um glasgow 1770 that's their flagship whiskey Th this is 1770 peated um and which is part of their core range this is the limited edition release this was five thousand bottles of their first release um they sell this at 46 percent natural color non chill filter um and you can see i mean there's no coloring in this this is this is the beautiful pale young whiskey um there's a sweetness on the finish of that that um it's it's like the spirit oh donna andrews uh hi donna that was you commenting well yes uh i'm i'm looking forward to everyone trying it too not just my cask there's only you know i don't know 300 bottles of that but all these new whiskeys, you know, that's what, that's why I got these other bottles out of my shelf before we started, uh, because it's such an exciting time in Scotland right now with all these whiskeys coming online. And I, I think that's true in other countries as well. I know there's tons and tons of new American distilleries, but the, it, it's really strange. Um, all these whiskeys seem to be coming online roughly, you know, within a year of each other or so right now in Scotland. And it's a cool time because they're really driving the category forward. If I can do some marketing speak, they're really, they're all creative they're all aggressive they're all i mean i can't think of an example i kind of feel like there is one that's maybe not really kind of that's chill filtering maybe releasing at 40 percent but i can't remember what it is right now so um i i just know that you know the, the the standard now has become this expectation of um integrity as ralphie would say of of you know craft excellence and that's really cool that all these new distilleries are doing that from the get-go and most of them don't sell to blenders you know traditionally so many distilleries with with blends being such a huge dominant majority of the of scotch whiskey sold most of the whiskey they would make no matter what the distillery was they would they would go get sold into blends and now all these new distilleries are not um they don't have the deals in place there isn't the need for them they make whiskey that they sell and i think that's really cool uh i think that probably puts a lot of pressure competitively on them because they have to, they they can't say oh well we didn't sell x number of bottles or cases this year so we're just going to sell this on to Chivas or Diageo or something because they're not buying it they have their own plants that do that stuff so they're making the whiskey that they can sell and and that's therefore there's an expectation of excellence there's an expectation of craft there's an expectation of transparency and integrity so um this is this is awesome. I've been kind of nervous about this all day, but I'm uh, nothing like it's it's the beautiful irony of doing this is that there's no better way to take the edge off than a whiskey. But what I'm doing is drinking whiskey, so it's self-serving. Uh, all right. Well, um, I am going to sign off, I guess, then. Um, Keith said, I joined an online tasting class. Uh, stand out for me was the peated one. You know, um, <clears throat> Keith, when we did our Burns Night, thing um the, the first kits we released the first six drams one of them was the peated um glasgow 1770 peated and that was release number two and it's funny what they had done is and i found i find this fascinating the cask regiment was the same they reversed it and i don't remember which was which one started out in a bourbon cask and then was finished 
and then they, they flipped it. And it was, then it started in a sherry cask and it's finished in a bourbon. Uh, they actually inverted. Yeah, I, I, I had absolutely no intention of bringing this up. So I didn't look it up and I don't remember exactly what they did. But they literally just kind of changed the order that they did things in. And the whiskey was just superlative. I got so many comments. You know, that dram, that those six drams in that first kit were all world world beating whiskeys. You know, there was... There was Brooklady's and Glenallachies and Balvenny and um, Waterford. And then, you know, this distillery that most people, especially in the U.S., have never even heard of, that's the one people were asking me about. And it was the second edition Glasgow 1770 peated. Um, mine is not technically that because this is a single cask. This has not been re-racked into anything. This is still in the cask I filled it in, hopefully not leaking. I did have some trouble with the bungs. Um, uh, Shug... Uh, Chug was showing me that a Cooper can get a bung in a cask in one shot. Uh, I could not. <laughs> and I think a bunch of our crew, that was the final day and our crew had arrived and they filmed some of it. And I think no one was able to. Um, it's a lot harder than that. It's why Coopers do such long apprentices, apprenticeships. Listen to me. Jeez. I've only had a half a dram. Uh, anyway, um, I want everyone to have a great Friday. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish I could share this with all of you. I really, really do. Uh, I'm really glad that you joined me to watch me drink whiskey. Um, next week, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now before I sign off. Next week, I'm going to be joined by Elijah Ammon um, from the Single Cast Nation because our retail bottling that we've done, um, I think some of you have probably seen that. Um, now we've posted a lot with the bottle with the sheep on it. I don't have one to hold up to show you. I actually do not have it myself yet. I've had the whiskey, but I don't have the bottle yet. I will get the bottles on Sunday. He and I are going to do a tasting together of it um, because that's the bottle that's going to be released nationwide here, sold in stores. I think there's 15, 16, 1700 bottles of it. Somewhere 1500, I think it is. Um, so that we're really excited about that because it's, it's more affordable than some of the other ones we've released. Uh, so that's going to be next Friday. And I hope everyone will join myself and Elijah then, and we can talk about that bottle as well and do another tasting. So if you get your hands on one, I know a few people have, they've written to me. People have seen it in the, in the wild now. Uh, so if you see it, Single Cast Nation, Water of Life collaboration, bottle, bottle with the sheep on it. We call it the Wolf Water of Life film in sheep's clothing. Um, so on that note, have a great Friday. Um, and uh, hopefully I get to actually meet and see all of you someday soon. Cheers. I'm going to go drink my whiskey. And I literally mean my whiskey. Bye, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>